Hi, and welcome to Storytime. I'm Cloud, and May is Mental Health Awareness Month. Let's go ahead and get started. My Monster and Me, written by Nadia Hussein and illustrated by Ella Bailey, read with permission by Penguin Random House. This is my monster, and this is me. I've always known my monster. It's always been there. It knows all about me. Maybe my monster arrived when I did. Maybe it moved in when I learned to walk and talk. I don't remember. It was always big. When it stood in front of me, I could see nothing but its huge tummy. At night, when I lay in bed, I could hear nothing but its ginormous, growly snore. I wanted Mom to take it away, but when Mom was there, my monster hid. I wished my brother could take it away, but my monster hid again. I wanted Dad to take it away, but it hid from him, too. My monster got bossier. It started telling me what to do when I was getting dressed and brushing my teeth. When I wanted to play with my toys, it sat on me. It even made me stay indoors when my friends came to play. I wanted to go out and join them, but my monster stood in the way and wouldn't budge. One day, my monster was waiting for me after school. It was gigantic, and it was in a bad mood. I tried to lose it, but I couldn't. It followed me all the way to Gran's house. Gran asked me what was wrong. In the end, I told her how my monster just wouldn't go away. It wouldn't leave me alone, ever. Gran listened quietly, and suddenly, my monster stopped what it was doing and listened too. It seemed to me that as I talked, my monster got smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I knew that I could make my monster go away, at least for a while. The next day, I saw my monster at school. It looked a bit lost, so I picked it up and put it in my pocket. I stroked its fur, and it went to sleep. It wasn't as scary anymore. I don't worry about my monster as much these days. I go to school, and I play with my friends. My monster likes my pocket, and I feel okay knowing it's there. But if it ever feels like getting out, I tell it to behave. My monster is part of me. We've known each other from the beginning. This is me, and this is my monster. The end. Next time your worries or fears feel too big to handle, try talking it out. It might help them seem smaller. Now, on to our next book. The Rabbit Listened by Corey Doerfeld, read with permission from Penguin Random House Books. One day, Taylor decided to build something. Something new. Something special. Something amazing. Taylor was so proud. But then, out of nowhere, things came crashing down. The chicken was the first to notice. Cluck, cluck, cluck. What a shame. I'm so sorry, sorry, sorry this happened. Let's talk, talk, talk about it. Cluck, 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 cluck. But Taylor didn't feel like talking, so the chicken left. Next came the bear. Rawr, rawr, how horrible. I bet you feel so angry. Let's shout about it. Rawr, rawr. But Taylor didn't feel like shouting, so the bear left. The elephant knew just what to do. I can fix this. We just need to remember exactly the way things were. But Taylor didn't feel like remembering. So the elephant also left. One by one they came. The hyena. <laughs> Let's laugh about it. The ostrich. Let's hide and pretend nothing happened. The kangaroo. Tsk, tsk, tsk. What a mess. Let's throw it all away. And the snake. Shh. Let's 
go knock down someone else's. But Taylor didn't feel like doing anything with anybody. So eventually, they all left, until Taylor was alone. In the quiet, Taylor didn't even notice the rabbit, but it moved closer and closer, until Taylor could feel its warm body. Together they sat in silence, until Taylor said, Please stay with me. The rabbit listened. The rabbit listened as Taylor talked. The rabbit listened as Taylor shouted. The rabbit listened as Taylor remembered and laughed. The rabbit listened to Taylor's plans to hide, to throw everything away, to ruin things for someone else. Through it all, the rabbit never left. And when the time was right, the rabbit listened to Taylor's plan to build again. I can't wait, Taylor said. It's going to be amazing. The end. Sometimes just being there and listening is enough. And now, on to craft time. Today, we're going to be making a wolf in sheep's clothing. But first, we're going to be reading the book that inspired the craft. Sheepish. Wolf Undercover by Helen Yoon. Read with permission by Candlewick Press. Nobody suspects a thing. I don't know about that. It's all part of my master plan. Step one, be helpful. Mm -hmm, very helpful. Step two, be handy. Sheep sandwich. Step three. Be fun. Be friendly. Be a team player. Step four. Be the sheepiest sheep that ever was. Then, when they least expect it, dinner time. Huh? The, the dinner time, right? Sheep, sheep Sunday, right? I can't do it. Nope, 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 nope. New plan. Step one. Step two. Success. Look at his little friends, the sheep. The no meat diet. Vegetarian. Or, okay, wait a minute. Guess he just won't eat sheep, huh? Huh? Why'd you leave? We miss you. We miss Come back. You. you know? Duh. <laughs> the whole 
time. The end. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.